So as we know from over the course of the semester, incarceration in the United States skyrocketed starting in the late 1970s. Um, and, and while the uh, number of people who are incarcerated in the United States is still very high, there has been a slow decrease in the number of incarcerated people starting in 2005. And in a second, we're going to talk about why, what were some of the reasons for that decline starting in 2005. And most recently, there's been a significant decrease in the, the incarcerated population in the United States. Um, and so as it says there, the numbers reduced quite significantly in 2020, in large part due to the pandemic. And so there was a 15% drop in the prison population um, and that there was a 25% drop in the jail population in the United States. So let's look at some graphs that will bring this, um, this uh, uh, to, that will illustrate these changes. So this is a very recent data from 2001 until 2021, okay? Um, and that it's from the Bureau of Justice Statistics from 2023. And we can see that the rate under people who are under supervision has decreased that the people on probation and parole has de decreased and that um you know uh, uh, that as we see here that there has been some decrease in the rate of incarceration as well and i think this graph actually gives us a better understanding of the trajectory the changes in incarceration in the united states because it, it you know shows a much longer period of time and again these are from the bureau of justice statistics uh in 2021 uh and so this shows you the historical and projected u.s state and federal prison populations um and that so from um, this side we have the green okay so this is based on historical data and so as we know in the 1970s okay that you know this is totally what we see in the 13th right that it's just like um skyrocketing levels of 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 incarceration in the united states and then as i mentioned before that we have this very you know slow sort of decline in incarceration it's still well above, you know, uh, incarceration rates in the 1970s, okay? But we are seeing some decline. You might be asking yourself, okay, what is this, okay? Well, what this is, is saying that if we continue the decline here from um, 2005, this is 2020, that's the plummet during the pandemic. That if we include, if we continue at that same rate, not the pandemic rate of 25%, but if we include the same rate of that decline that started in 2005, that it's going to take us to the year 2098 to get back to like 1980 levels of incarceration. Okay. So a very long period of time. So some folks in the, um, you know, de incarceration realm are saying that if we actually want to see, uh, reductions in incarceration uh, in, you know, like before 2098, which I'll be long dead by then, right? Um, maybe some of y'all will be dead too, you know, but I mean that we're really going to have to have that kind of significant reductions that we saw during the pandemic. Um, and so let's take a look at what happened during the pandemic and also what contributed to this decline here from 2005 to, to 2020. So what was responsible for the decrease starting in 2005, okay? Well, prior to the pandemic, so from 2005 until 2020, where we do see a slow decrease, um, most criminologists and those who you know, study crime statistics think that the reasons for that decline were that continued decrease in crime in the United States. We know that, you know, uh, crime has been on the decline for a very long period of time. We have seen some upticks in 2020. Remains to be seen to what degree those upticks are going to continue going up. Um, but, you know, pre-pandemic, crime was on the decline, okay? When crime's on the decline, it's likely that less people are going to get locked up. And less people admitted means that rates are going to go down because people's sentences are, are, are going to be ending. Um, there are other there are policy reasons. There were changes in sentencing law. Um, obviously, there are changes in drug laws. A lot of uh, states began, you know, um, legalizing recreational use of marijuana. And so these are the things that um, uh, criminologists point to in terms of explaining that decrease. Um, why the decrease during pandemic? Well, um, it's not because we were letting people go. Okay, the rate of um, 
um, people leaving prison didn't increase. But what did decrease, okay, uh, was the rate of admissions into prison and jail, okay? There were a lot less admissions to prison and jail, and that contributes a lot to this decline um, uh, during the pandemic year of 2020. Uh, and it also because of the p pandemic, there was just a general slowdown of the justice system. Things were delayed. The, the courtrooms weren't, you know, fully staffed people. It was remote work. I mean, it was very difficult, right? Uh, and so that, that contributes to it, okay? The question is, is, is this going to continue? Uh, and the chances of this kind of decrease continuing, the pandemic level of, of, of uh, decrease continuing is not likely. We're already beginning to see in 2021 and 2022 some upticks in terms of the, the prison pop and jail population. So it's something we're gonna have to keep our eyes on. So will the decrease in the prison population continue? Well, as I mentioned on the last slide, not at the same rate as during the pandemic. Um, we, you know, we're already seeing some increases back to pre-pandemic, not as much as, you know, pre-pandemic levels, but we're, you know, we're be beginning to see a tick back up. So we'll see what happens in the future. Um, you know, we could get higher rates of the decrease in the prison population if we enacted some of the reforms that are pursued um, and outlined in uh, Jonathan Papp's book and, and others who are working on, on this. Um, but in order to get those reforms passed, as we know from reading that book, you're going to have to have public buy-in on that, on these kinds of reforms. And so, um, our, you know, what are the attitudes of Americans? Um, do they support these kinds of reforms? Um, and um, if we see these changing attitudes, would those changing attitudes uh, support for the reduction of the incarcerated population? Is that going to play itself out in an actual enactment of public policy? Well, let's look. We don't know whether it's going to play out in an enactment of public policy. But let's take a look at some uh, public opinion data. So this is a survey that was done by the Pew Research Center in 2021. Um, and it's basically asking people that um, when you think about people who are convicted of crimes in the United States, um, do you think that they are, are serving too much time, too little time in prison, or about the right amount of time? And so when you look at this survey data, and this is the total of all people, and then here it's broken down by party and other demographic um, uh, variables, uh, you see that, you know, the vast majority of people in the United States think that um, either that too little time is served in prison, so it's kind of a give people more time in prison, or about the right amount of time. And that we see that um, you know less than a third of people in the United States um, think that too much time is served. Uh, so when you look at public opinion like that, you know um, that it might be difficult to enact some of these reforms because it might go against what the public wants. However, when you break it down a little bit, that you know um, Democrats uh, are much more and liberals are much more likely to say that too much time is served. So I guess if you get a Democratic Congress and a Democratic president, it's potential that um, you know maybe there might be some federal prison reform, but you know state by state that might be a little bit more difficult because many states are held by um, uh, uh, Republican legislatures. Not all, I mean, obviously, but some. Uh, and, and then uh, you'll see that there's also difference in terms of attitudes that white people are more likely to say too little time or um, the right amount of time, um, but African Americans and other minorities, but mostly African Americans, are saying that too much time is served. Um, and that might make sense given the disproportionate number of people who are uh, of black who are serving time in prison. I'll end here taking a look at an interesting survey from 2022 that was done by the Alliance for Safety and Justice, and it's a national survey of people who have been victims of violent crime, okay, and getting a sense of what their, their views are. Uh, and this is interesting because, I mean, when you look at the general population from the Pew Report, it seems like people, you know, really are sort of supportive of letting people, you know, just finish out their sentence or even maybe have longer sentences. But when you ask victims of violent crime, they have sort of a, a different perspective. Uh, and this first um, uh, uh, question here, the question is that should people uh, be held accountable for their violent crime by being put in prison? 18% said yes, but 75% said that they would support alternatives um, to being put in prison for their violent offense, alternatives such as restorative justice 
or a form of rehabilitation. Uh, and this one, the question is that um, should more money be invested in building prisons? And 10% said uh, that they that we should invest in more prisons. And 80% said we should invest in other types of uh, treatment, such as mental health treatment. Uh, when it comes to fully completing your sentence, this line here, that 17% of people said that you should serve your entire sentence, sort of truth and sentencing model like we have in the United States. Um, but that 72% support, um, you know, sort of a, a, a an earned time program that you get the days cut off from your sentence for good behavior, for demonstrating that you've been rehabilitated. Uh, and then finally, that, um, uh, that when it comes to alternatives, not to prison, but to jail, uh, 21 percent are uh, supportive of of um, people being in jail prior to trial if they can't make bail and 71 percent okay so I, I think we see here that there you know that when it comes to people are much more willing to invest in rehabilitation more willing to use restorative justice me measures um, and, and also um, you know um, giving people an opportunity to demonstrate that they can improve themselves while in prison and this is coming from people who have first hand experience with being victims of violent crime. All right, that's it for me. And the next lecture, you're going to be learning about the two historic models of prisons in the United States, the Pennsylvania model and the Auburn model. Thank you for paying attention. I really appreciate your time and I will talk to you again soon.